not with uh, different variants of tones and fluffs because uh, there's you can find from all shades of greens and grays and oranges and pinks, yeah. uh, limes and lemons. And yeah. It's quite interesting. And uh, is that more organic for you? Well, you know. I guess, I mean, the colors that I use, I, I prefer a subdued palette, you know, rather than, than sort of a, a fully, fully saturated chromatic palette. That interested me too. The work being small, being subdued, being quiet, and the colors sort of lend themselves to that. Um, the, uh, I, I, I started off with a very restricted palette of, of, of basically Naples, yellow, um, uh, 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 a, a chromatic green and a white and sort of played with those threes. And then later I wanted something that was uh, obviously to complement that to sort of change. So I started to bring in the pinks, I started playing with the pinks. And then I wanted something, didn't really want to move into something, uh, another color, so I, I moved into the sort of gray, you know, gray tones. So this is, I'm playing on the sort of idea like, uh, of half tone that you'll see in printing, and now it's always fascinated me half tone, especially uh, you know, as a kid I used to have psychedelic posters, and it would often be, you know, half tone of Jimi Hendrix's head, and then the dots would sort of, you know, uh, sort of accumulate and disperse over the surface, you know, and and I like the idea that it it, it creates a kind of um, how should I say, animation. They become animated because they're free into the kind of movement, you know. But there's also the, you know, the play of the, the sort of variation in scale, you know. Um, so that's, that's relatively new and I'm pretty excited about that approach. Well, that's, uh, well, I, I use a tool to that. I'm use, I use mostly hardware tools to make my work. All the dots are basically in light using, using a drill. So I'm using drill pits to, to sort of drill into the... This is used with, I have a large metal washer that I put down on the surface and carve it out. So I work my, uh, on quite dimensionally, not on these works so much, but on other works, I, they are uh, far more 3D. So um, yeah, it's just a source of tools that, uh, you know, that I come up with. That, I mean, Yeah. And we talked about Alicia Pierce earlier that her work is all, all about wallpaper like mm -hmm. behind what's behind the danger of the fountain behind the layers of yeah. layers. So I think in that case both of you she's more figurative but at the same time abstracted. Mm -hmm. And I find that both of you work like, sort of connects together mm -hmm. in colors and patterns yeah. and layers and transparency. Yeah. Well, I think that it is very, I mean, it's, for instance, if you look at the sculptures of, of, of Berlin de Brukaya, she casts in wax, and, and it, I, mean, it, I mean, they're phenomenal in that how she can replicate skin, especially, you know, bruised and damaged skin. So, um, that lately, that's been quite an influence on my thinking. Not that I'm going to emulate her, but it, it brings something in my own way I, I, yeah, so um, it's a continuum, basically. That's why I see this, is I'm making various changes over a period of time, and I, it's a series that I want to continue on over the next couple of years, and basically restricting myself to this one format. Not that I will do you know, other stuff, but this is um, brightness continues. Thank you so much. Okay.